To all the clients I've served before, to the ones who have yet walked through my door. This week we're going to help you find a possible solution to today's housing affordability issues, so stay tuned. Halloween edition. Welcome to another local market update with Rick Batista. Welcome, welcome to another weekly market update. As the world continues to figure out how to deal with the fair housing crisis in the Middle East, a topic I spoke about at length in last week's video, we're here to help you deal with the future as we do our best part to keep our hopes alive and our faith in humanity intact. I'm not going to lie to you, there are major concerns around housing affordability right now. Many are calling it a crisis, but I'm sorry. When I see pictures and videos of innocent lives lost and for those who quote unquote have survived, at least for now, have no home to go back to, I can't call this a crisis. For many of us, it may seem detrimental, may seem like we were so close to home ownership and now we have to wait longer. Be thankful, because as they say, we have first world problems. We have concerns, we have worries, we have setbacks. What we don't have is a crisis. But before we get into housing affordability, let me first say that with so many things going on with the economy right now, as well as in and around housing, I'm committed to bringing you both weekly and monthly market updates because once a month just doesn't cut it. And I've got to confess something. I do find myself scratching my head about this market and I know what's going on. So if I'm confused here and there, I can only imagine how you must feel. My commitment is to help you understand what your options are and how to make sense of it all. Before we get started, I want to let you know that this video discusses both national and local data. The local data we'll share in just a bit is for Chicago proper, the 77 areas. And although we do service all of Chicagoland, including debt burps, later in this video we're only going to dive into the city's data. So let's get started with a fun fact and take it from there. According to Adams Q3 2023 U.S. Home Affordability Report, median price single-family homes and condos were less affordable compared to the historical averages in 99% of counties nationwide in the third quarter of 2023. Home sale prices have continued to rise across the country, and with mortgage rates above 7%, now hitting eight, major home ownership expenses now take up 35% of the average national wage, the highest level since 2007, and well above the 20% affordability standard commonly used by many lenders. Just before the time of this filming, the 10-year treasury yield hit right around 5%, which means interest rates are likely going to remain high uh, for some time. And if you've been watching our market updates, we went in deep a few months back on the relationship with the 10-year treasury yield and mortgage rates, rates that at this time are at around 8%. Folks, please get into your heads. There's a very good chance that we're never going back to 3%. If so, it may not be in our lifetime. So hoping to get back into the fives is number one, more realistic, and two, it may take some time. With all that said, let's not get into the dangerous territory where we tend to rationalize ourselves out of home ownership and, sh and shift our minds away from real estate altogether because time and time again, generation after generation, the number one way people, average households like yours and mine, can get a leg up in this society and economy is and has been thanks to home ownership and real estate. Let's be upfront about this. It's gotten so bad that a whole generation has started to think that owning a home is not part of the American dream. This bar graph with data from a recent Harris poll shows that 52% of Gen Z and 53% of millennials don't believe that owning a home is a vital part of the American dream. 64% of boomers, and hey, did they forget about us Gen Xers? I think I'm gonna have to write a firm letter about that. John Gerzema, if I'm pronouncing that last name correctly, the CEO at Harris poll said, Gen Z is telling us that they can't buy into that American dream the way that their parents and grandparents thought about it, because it's not attainable. There's an entire generation that feels like they're coming of age in sort of this fractured, divisive world where traditional systems no longer work for them. What do you think? Did the system fail and pollute younger generations? I think there's some validity to that. But I like to point out that we like to toss around these abstract words to toss blame at an, at an entity, the man, corporate fat cats, the government, politicians, the system. I feel that when we do so, we kind of remove accountability from ourselves, we humans. Who makes up society? Who is in control of the system? Machines and technology are certainly aiding and abetting, but it's we human beings that are failing ourselves and future generations. We all have a role, along with responsibilities within our households, communities, and even to the world. Let's get it together, people. To further drive the point home about younger and hopeful future homeowners, Megan Hunt and David McMillan, contributors at Bankrate, said, Generation Z is quickly superseding millennials as the coming-of-age consumer group. However, as they reach young adulthood, this cohort, born between 1997 and 2012, is beginning to confront a daunting fact. Their dream of home ownership might be tough to turn into reality anytime soon. And this is not something that is only impacting Gen Z, right? With higher rates, low inventory, and continued home appreciation, housing affordability is also impacting millennials, people of other generations, and overall many households right now. My job, along with my colleagues within the real estate industry and our partners in the lending world, is to help calm the storm and help reduce the noise in our heads by bringing you information. 
data, insight, and words of wisdom to help you make informed decisions for your household. This may not be the only solution, but it certainly is one that is potentially a great solution, multi-generational living. The Triangle Business Journal said, choosing multi-gen living allows people to purchase a home much larger than they could afford on their own by leveraging the combined income, credit, and down payment of those that they will be occupying the home with. 28% of first-time home buyers are choosing this as an option as well as cost savings. And we're going to discuss this a bit more, but multi-generational living can take on more than one shape. It can be a home large enough to meet everyone's needs. It can also be a multi-unit building, two to four flat as we call them here in Chicago, sometimes referred to as a duplex or triplex, etc. in other parts of the country, also referred to as an ADU or an accessory dwelling unit. But why the heck would someone want to live with their parents or grandparents? Well, the reality is many young adults are, are currently living with their parents well into their adult years. Over the pandemic, some had to return back home. So even if everyone doesn't get along as much as you'd like, is this idea so far-fetched? If you're already close, perhaps too close, to your parents or grandparents, why not put your resources together to own something together? And it doesn't have to be blood relatives. You can pursue this opportunity and option with friends or other loved ones. You can have separate space or your own units, set up some ground rules and boundaries, and find a way to live in harmony while saving on housing expenses. If you don't have any family, friends, or loved ones you'd like to pursue this with, you could purchase a property and become a landlord, having one or more unit rented by another household who is going to help pay your mortgage and or housing expenses. In that scenario, if you put enough money down, you may find yourselves paying little to barely anything, and in some cases seeing a profit, whether it be immediate or down the line. Here's a quote from Vance Cariaga, a journalist at Go Banking Rates. Never underestimate the power of grandchildren, especially when it comes to lifestyle and financial decisions. Recent data shows that many baby boomers are relocating further away from home than they used to so they can be closer to their grandbabies. And I can shed some light on this scenario from my own personal experiences throughout my life. My parents purchased a two-flat in Roscoe Village in Chicago back in 1974. They purchased it with my grandmother, my dad's mom, at a time when single women, and more so a widow, had a very difficult time obtaining a mortgage loan on their own. And my maternal grandparents lived within a couple or few blocks from most of my childhood, well into my teen years. After 20 years and 358 days, I moved into an apartment. I had promised myself that I'd be out of the house before I turned 21, and I made it happen. After a couple of years in my first marriage, I bought a condo in Rogers Park. The condo craze was starting at the time, and my condo more than doubled in value in less than two years. At the same time, my maternal grandparents, my mom, my parents had since divorced, and my sister's family were also in condos. We all decided to take advantage of the market, sold our units, and purchased a three-flat with a garden unit in the West Ridge neighborhood, the last true melting pot in the city. I spent 20 years in that building, divorced, then remarried to my beautiful wife and amazing partner in life and business, Noor, and during the pandemic, we moved to be closer to my dad, back in the same two-flat I grew up in. Do you know what the best experiences in each of those scenarios were? Being closer to my parents, my grandparents, and especially having my kids close to their grandparents or even great-grandparents. Were things perfect? Absolutely not. Were there disagreements? Absolutely. We're only human. But if you can make it work, please find a way to do so. Done right, your benefits will go far beyond homeownership in the sense of finances and expenses. If you haven't read it, there's a book called Hold On To Your Kids, which discusses in great detail the benefits of children being around their families and or within a more tightly knit community. For you kids out there, you hear about people reliving the good old days, when I was a kid, this or that. But you know what? For those of you who are looking for a simpler and healthier way of life these days, you're essentially looking to live in a society from yesteryear. Things weren't perfect or certainly even fair for all walks of life. But having a home with both parents and our grandparents, knowing your neighbors, having local businesses with the business owners living in the neighborhood or nearby, it created a great sense of community. It held people of all ages more accountable. It made life a little simpler when everyone was looking out for one another. It wasn't just a fairy tale expressed in memes today. It was a reality for many. Moving along, let's take a look at this data from the census that shows a growing trend of more Americans moving for the family. In 2021, 24.6% of all those moving were moving for family reasons. Last year, that number increased to 26.5%. The next pie chart from NAR, National Association of Realtors, shows that empty nesters dominate the sellers currently in the market. 77% don't have children under 18 still living at home. And I've had clients and or have seen these scenarios time and time again. Some people live in a home far too long beyond the moment and no longer meets their needs. Some of you might find yourself climbing too many stairs in order to sleep in your own bed comfortably. Maybe the tub wall is too high and has become a great challenge to get your leg over just to take a shower or bath on a regular basis. Perhaps you're too far away from friends and family because people have moved away and or passed away. A sad reality as we get older. This next bar graph with data from NARD leaves us with a big question. Why are grandparents moving further away? What we're looking at is the percent of sellers who moved at least 100 miles by years of age. 40% of those, 18 to 34, 35 to 44, 22%, 41% of those, 45 to 54, 58%, 55 to 64, 56%, 65 to 74, and 40%, 75 and older. 
Now, there can be so many different scenarios within all of those age groups, but focusing on those who are likely to be of grandparent age, I've seen this within my own circle and among clients. In fact, I recently helped a client relocate across the country to be closer to their grandchild. The love from a grandparent is very different, and that love is so powerful that it makes grandparents want to move to be closer to their grandkids, and maybe their kids too. And let's face it, raising kids is not easy, and it's harder when you're doing it without help. And what better help than from a grandparent who, although they may spoil the crap out of them, is going to take better care than just about anyone else. And you know something? I've seen some recent trends that remind me of grandma and grandpa that actually appeals to younger folk, whether it be clothing or home decor. That doesn't scream, some of my best childhood memories are with my grandparents. I don't know what does. Further data that shows sellers want to be near their families. It looks like NAR recently did a survey and the top five reasons why sellers sold. 21% said to be closer to their family and friends. 11% were retiring, good for them. Another 11% said their neighborhood became less desirable. Very unfortunate, and, but it does happen. And 10% said that their home was just too small to meet their growing needs. 9% said that there was a change in the family situation, such as marriage or divorce. To circle back to people of an older generation, here's a quote from Ksenia Potovov, an economist at First American. The number of people 80 years of age or older is expected to more than double between 2022 and 2040, increasing from 13 million to 28 million. As the baby boomer generation ages into their 80s, starting slowly in the late 2020s and picking up speed in the 2030s, they will likely begin downsizing and selling their homes, putting more housing supply on the market. To piggyback onto that, the Triangle Business Journal notes that for repeat buyers, they're, they're making the multi-generational housing choice because 23% of them are caring for aging parents. Which reminds me of the days I worked at a senior home. Every morning, one resident would come down, take a look at me and say, don't get old. I would usually respond with, I'm trying, but the reality is we can't avoid it. How we get old and where we get old, we can certainly have some control over, be it our health and our, our living arrangements. Prepare so you can actually and hopefully enjoy your golden years. Now, Realtor.com took a very interesting poll showing that hopeful home buyers are turning relatives into roommates to save money. For home shoppers looking to move closer to family, roughly half site giving help with childcare is a reason. And 44% of respondents are looking for a move closer to family to receive help with childcare for their own children. In line with this familial poll, Almost half of respondents said that siblings have purchased or considered purchasing a home to be nearby, and 46% says say parents have done or considered doing the same. Furthermore, the Triangle Business Journal is back with this statement. The circumstances over the past few years between the 2008 financial crisis and the COVID-19 pandemic have changed the way families are buying homes. According to data from the National Association of Realtors, multi-generational buying rose to an all-time high in 2022, 14%. Compare that to 2021, when this option was at 11%. And to that point, the census shows that in 10 years, from, from 2010 to 2020, there were more children living with their grandparents. In 2020, 6.1 million or 8.4% of children under 18 lived in their grandparents' home, up from 5.8 million in 2010. Something we touched on earlier, Richard Fry, an analyst at Pew Research, said, Multi-generational living has increased among all ages over the past five decades, but the increase has been fastest among adults ages 25 to 34. And please know that I'm not sitting here telling you all of this to start a trend. The trend has already begun. I'm here to shed some light when it comes to housing affordability because the news will make you believe that there's simply no hope with high rates and low inventory. And you do have options. And here comes the cavalry. Some builders have caught on to this growing opportunity. The Triangle Business Journal states that builders are now developing multi-generational floor plans that include designs with two master suites, including main floor suites with kitchenettes. Many offer shared spaces for gathering as the extended family while also providing additional privacy when it's needed most. Some include flex space that can shift from a family office to a nursery to give the ability to adapt. Some include detached casita living options for even more privacy for your family. To touch on the reality of the situation, like I said earlier, it's not just about saving costs on home ownership. Because something I've said time and time again, real estate is 100% about emotions. According to Pure Research, here are what most multi-gen occupants see as positives or not. 58% of occupants find living with adult family members to be convenient most of the time, 54% rewarding, and 23% stressful. All three things I believe I covered from sharing my own experience earlier in this video. This is not a situation that may work for everyone, but I want you to at least consider it. Now, touching on multi-units, two to four flats or ADUs, accessory dwelling units, Freddie Mac says, having an accessory dwelling unit on an existing property has become a popular way for homeowners to offer independent living space to family members. 
The AARP explains an ADU in greater detail, and, and please note I have not yet begun to receive anything from AARP. Well, uh, well, there was that one time, but it was an error, I swear. What is an accessory dwelling unit in ADU? A small residence that shares a single family lot with a larger primary dwelling. An independent, self-contained living space with a kitchen or kitchenette, bathroom, and sleeping area. An ADU can be located within, attached to, or detached from the main residence. It can be created out of an existing structure, such as a garage, or built anew. Because an ADU exists on a single family lot, as a secondary dwelling, it typically cannot be sold separately from the primary residence. And we'll touch on a couple of other things in just a moment. To discuss ADUs further, Scott Wild, Senior VP of Consulting at John Burns Research said, it's gone from a small niche in the market to really a much more impactful part of new housing. Municipalities love it. Existing homeowners love it. Developers love it. And here's been something I've been dying to share with you. Something that a very good friend, client, and mortgage lender shared with me last week. The Federal Housing Administration has expanded access to mortgage financing for homes that have or will include accessory dwelling units. The announcement of the new HUD number 23-237 is a new policy that will that will enable more first-time home buyers, seniors, and, inter- and intergenerational families to leverage the power of ADUs to enhance the generational wealth building potential of home ownership. Now, while we're discussing ADUs, I want to point out something from the Los Angeles Times from October 14th. They said under AB 1033, which was signed into law this week, property owners in participating cities will be able to construct an ADU on their land and sell it separately, following the same rules that apply to condominiums. Who knows if this is something that will eventually apply across the nation, but policies and programs do have to evolve with the times. And as you may have heard, it first happens in California, then spreads across the land. So time will tell. Moving right along, Alexandra, I'm sure I'm going to torture this last name, Kadzielowski, senior editor at the Mortgage Reports, points out that in a significant policy change, Fannie Mae has announced that it will accept 5% down payments for owner-occupied two, three, and four unit homes. This marks a departure from the previous multifamily financing requirement of 15 to 25% down. And if this alone is not a game changer when it comes to housing affordability, I don't know what is. This is a huge game changer. And we're going to wrap this slideshow up with two quotes. Uh, The first from Naveen Reddy, financial writer and content strategist. Having a good multi-generational property can improve the prospects of success when living with loved ones. A multi-generational home should fit the specific needs of most family members regardless of age or health. Speaking to a real estate agent, like yours truly, can help you gain clarity and locate a fit. And a returning champs, the Triangle Business Journal says, if you're interested in multi-generational housing for your next move, you may want to consider talking to a trusted agent, like yours truly, and a local lending company to find out how combined finances can help you get the right home for your needs. Listen, two very important points. Buying isn't for everyone, renting isn't for everyone. You have to do what is best for you and your household when it's best for you and your household. Number two, you can't beat the system, but you can play within the system. I know generational wealth is one of those terms that has been and is being tossed around a lot lately, sometimes at nauseum, especially when it comes to housing, but this is the way the part of the market is moving. It may not be the number one way people are owning or looking to own homes, but it is a growing trend because for many, it makes sense. Bottom line, is this for everyone? No. But with the pieces of the puzzle being put into place with lending programs and builders building these types of homes and properties, I feel it is very important to get the word out to those of you who want to take advantage of this great opportunity. Believe me, I am a great cynic. I am also an idealist. And as I heard George Carlin once say, if you scratch a cynic, you'll find a disappointed idealist. I have issues with the government and politicians, but sometimes they get things right. And I'll admit this, they may even get it right without my full understanding as to why or how. With that said, finding answers to solve the issues and concerns within within the housing industry is one of the things some of the folks from D.C. all the way down to your local jurisdictions are working on getting it right. Affordability is an issue, more so now than just less than a year and a half ago. The real estate and mortgage industries, along with politicians, need to help find answers, find solutions. It is our responsibility. It is our duty. And some of us actually take our responsibilities and duties very seriously. Whether you're a realtor, mortgage lender, or a politician, we are here to serve the public. So forget all the flashy crap. Real estate isn't about fancy clothes, cars, and and swimming and piles of money. It's all bullshit. There are no filters in life except the ones we choose to look through. Life ain't getting any easier. You think it would be, given that with time, we as a species would be getting better as we evolve, if we evolve, if we're actually evolving. In some ways we have, in some ways we haven't. And one of the ways we haven't is by getting sidetracked with all the damn noise out there, the internet, social media, and the list goes on. However you're listening to my words, I'll be the first to admit that the dot-com world can be a wonderful resource to stay connected and informed. But there's so much noise and bullshit out there that I know that it is so difficult to sift through all the garbage. That I know it is so difficult to sift through all the garbage. Here's your test. If you're watching something that brought you zero value to improving your life or the lives within your household or community, garbage. Turn it off. Unfollow. 
and you're scrolling and you've heard the same trending song more than once, garbage, turn it off, uninstall. Entertainment is one thing and has a place in this world, but being exposed to so much nonsense to the point where you still haven't saved enough money for a down payment, you still haven't exercised as much as you'd like, you still haven't spent enough quality time with your family members, loved ones, and friends, all it is is garbage. And garbage is meant to be in a landfill or incinerated, or thanks to technological advancements, tossed out into space. Folks, I'm not saying that real estate and homeownership is going to make you rich and bring your kids, grandkids, and future gener generations more money than you'll ever need. Although real estate has made that a reality for some families, it may not be a reality for everyone. What real estate and homeownership does is it levels the playing field. The average household struggles more than they like to admit. After you've lived somewhere for years and gone through all those struggles and life changes, wouldn't you like to have something to show for besides memories and moving costs? Owning a home and or investment properties can help you later in life when it comes time for those unexpected moments. It can help you help your kids or grandkids get a step up in life rather than being behind the eight ball when with growing student debt. What's the point of making six figures out of college if you have to spend the first 10 years of your career breaking even and waiting another five, 10 or more years to finally be making enough money to pay off your debt? The system isn't fair. The system doesn't make sense. But I, but as I said earlier, the system wasn't meant to be beat, but played. If you haven't done so already, please consider home ownership. If you already own a home and have thought of purchasing a rental property, keep thinking. It's possible. And those thoughts turn into action, even in times where things seem so bleak, can turn into something beautiful for generations to come. And whether you're a parent, want to be a parent, or trying to be a parent, or can't stand kids at all, even though we're kind of sucking at it these days, isn't it our duty as human beings to make life better for the next generation? Isn't it our duty as human beings to make life better for the next generation? Now it's time to wake up, wake up. for the moment you've all been waiting for. This information and data is provided by the Chicago Association of Realtors covering the week ending October 14th and is current as of October 23rd. From fun facts, we go to quick facts. Uh, this is looking at year over year changes. Uh, new listings for the, this for residential property in Chicago. Again, the Chicago property, the 77 areas of Chicago. New listings down 19.1% in the detached market. Uh, attachment condos and townhomes down by 13.7%. Under contract up by uh, just under 30, 32%, not too shabby. And attached actually up this week, uh, up uh, just under 10%. Homes for sale down by 26.8% year over year for detached and 20, and down by 24.7% for attached. And to bust those numbers down further, uh, new listings, we wrapped up the week of October 14th with 331 single family detached homes, hitting the market three month average of 346, year over year change down by 20.7%, single family attached 434, three month average of 491, and down by just over 16% year over year. Under contract, we wrapped up the week of October 14th with 190 single-family detached homes, three-month average of 173, no change year over year, and the attached market 222 with a three-month average of 241, down by 5.2%. And inventory of homes for sale, we wrapped up the week of October 14th with 2,354 single-family detached homes, bringing us the three-month average of 2,359, down by 24.7% year over year, and single-family attached. 3,609 with a three month average of 3,509 and down by 29.8% year over year. So what does all this information mean for you? Heck if I know. All depends on what's going on in your life and your household. Let's start a conversation and see how we can help you make the most informed decisions. If you like copies of any of the reports or slides we shared with you today, feel free to reach out. You can call, text, or email. My contact info is below. And remember, love and money may come and go, but time is something we never get back. So I thank and appreciate you for sharing some of your time with me today. If you want to stay on top of the market with us, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And think of one person you believe would benefit from this info, then be sure to share it with them. As always, and now more than ever, take care of yourselves and each other. Don't forget to hug someone today, and I'll catch you next time.